Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is all about the UK decision making section. I'll be explaining what types of questions you guys can typically expect in this section and also show you various strategies that you guys can implement when revising for the section. I'll also be giving you examples throughout this video in order to really illustrate my strategies and so that it makes it really easy for you guys as to how to revise. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shivank and I'm currently a year 13 student during my summer holidays. I've achieved three A stars at, at A level and I'll now be studying medicine at Imperial College London starting this October. And I'm really looking forward to it and more videos will be upcoming about that. So without further ado, let's get back onto the video. So what exactly is a decision making section? What is a test? What does it entail? All these questions I'll answer right now. So the decision making section is 29 marks and you get 31 minutes plus one minute to read the instruction. So you roughly have one minute per section slightly over. As like the other three sections, excluding SJT, you are scored between 300 to 900. And this is also a relatively new section, so it is only introduced, I believe, in 2017, having trialed at the year before 2016. So what exactly does it test? So I think the section is really interesting because it tests a wide variety of skills. So you can be presented with either a graph, Venn diagram, a small text, a massive paragraph description, a wide variety of things, and you have to be able to infer the data in order to answer the questions, which sounds quite simple. You just present it with the data, you just have to look at the key facts and then you're done. But it's often much easier said than done, especially with Venn diagrams, for instance, there's a lot of data presented and you have to be able to infer the key data because you also have to manage time. And so I'll be explaining how you guys can do this in order to score really well, as for instance, I scored 740 using these strategies, which I'll now be talking about. So now moving on to the questions, there are two types of questions. The first type being about four answer options. So you're, so you're presented with a text diagram, etc. And inferring this, you have four answer options, which are usually yes or no. There are six types of questions following on from this type, which I'll now discuss. So the first one is logical puzzles and as said by the name, you just have to, you're presented with perhaps a text, a diagram, and then using this, you have to infer and make a logical conclusion out of it. So the next type of question which you can expect is syllogisms. This is where you're presented with a set of conditions and then you're presented with the answer options which are uh, conclusions and you have to see if the conclusions follow on from the conditions. This is typically quite difficult because sometimes you might, only one of them will follow from the conditions but most of the time it's usually more than one answer. As stated before with logical puzzles, so logical puzzles are slightly different to this one which is interpreting information. Interpreting information in which you directly take the text or paragraph and then use the same data in order to answer the conclusion, whereas with logical puzzles you take an inference and then answer the conclusion. Recognizing assumption. Now this is the one which I particularly found the most difficult. This is because you're presented with various arguments and you have to show which one is right and which one is wrong. And often if it's a topic which I know about and if it isn't, I have my own views on it. And so I'm obviously biased more towards one side. However, with these question decision making and as also an SJT, which I'll talk about in another video, you have to make sure you're not biased and you're directly answering the options. So you have to make sure you answer the option which is most suited to this and you don't use any bias within yourself. So Venn diagrams. So with Venn diagrams, you can expect a lot of questions related to decision making. So firstly, you may present with a set of data and you might have to construct a Venn diagram. And so you have to be able to show this uh, in the test. This is often the one that takes the longest. Another one is, for example, there's four Venn diagram options and you have to choose the one which is right. And another one is where you're presented with a Venn diagram. And then from the Venn diagram, you have to decipher as to whether uh, which of the four options is correct. For example, the Venn diagram had five um, it was about who played badminton and table tennis and there are five people who played both and then the answer options were one person plays one uh two people play uh, both or three people play both or five we know the answer option is five because in the venn diagram it says five people play badminton and five people play tennis something similar like that is what you can expect so the next one is probability reasoning and this is the last one out of the type one this is where you're presented with a data that has some statistical data and you have to find the best possible answer to the conclusion provided. Now, moving on to the next type, which is simply yes or no questions. They are presented with your data. You simply have to answer yes or no by dragging the box. And that's really all there is to it. So now moving on to the main thing of the video and probably what you're most interested in is a few hints and tricks, which I think will really help you when revising. So with the decision making section, I think it's the most important section where you jot down any form of data. 
because with this section you're presented with a lot of data especially with venn diagram i don't know why but i love putting a lot of data into it and so if you notice anything because you've done a calculation in your mind just draw it down on the whiteboard it's really useful and it'll be back of your mind and so you won't have to use it again and again and i think it's really useful and will save a lot of time the second tip is familiarize with the graphs so there's bar charts there's line graphs all these types of graphs just really familiarize yourself if you do a level maths that's perfect because you're probably already used to this as was i but for someone who if someone doesn't then i think it's really useful just to look over graphs because you'll be able to understand the axes very well and be able to decipher the data uh, very quickly this way uh, number three as i mentioned before the idea of using arguments make sure that you're not biased i think it's very important that you don't be biased because if you uh, try adding your own opinion into the uh, decision making it'll go completely wrong because often your argument your opinion could uh, coincide with the uh, argument or could completely go against it and so just make sure you use what's provided and only use this furthermore in the decision making section and perhaps also in the quantity reasoning section you're most likely to use the calculator this is because you're presented with a lot of statistical data and so it really makes sense so for example if the calculation had 15 times 16 and if it times it by 12 again for instance you can do 15 times 16 times 12 all in the calculator or for instance, if it was step by step, you can do 15 times 16, note that down on the whiteboard, and then using this data, you can then times it by 12 afterwards, having read more. And I think that's really key, because if, for instance, you read the first paragraph, it said 15 times 16, and then when you go into the third paragraph, it says times that number by 12, you would have already forgot by that by that time what the first paragraph said about 15 times 16. And so you have to reread it to double check. Whereas instead you could write it down on the whiteboard and then just simply add that into calculator and you'll be done much quicker. And so I really recommend using the whiteboard because it saves a lot of time. Now tip number six, which sounds really obvious, but it's to selectively extract key details. And many people are often guilty of this, my, me myself, is I read an entire passage. Okay, let's say it's presented with your data, let's say Venn diagram and you read the entire thing and the question and then answer options, which makes sense and which you really should do. But when answering the answer options, we just, uh, well, what I do at least, is I look through the answer options and go through each individually and then reread the question to find out what detail. Whereas instead I could read the question first properly, find out the key detail that I need. For example, the question is about cars and the question says cars. I can then look at the answer options and make sure which one has cars and only look at these ones. This way it saves a lot of time because for some reason, I don't know why I like to read the question, read the answer options, and then I've already forgot the question and then I have to reread the question and then I notice the keyword which wastes a lot of time so it's much better to read the key keyword in the question and then answer the answer options this way. So now we're moving on to the examples having done the various tips and tricks and the types of questions that you guys can expect in the decision making section. So the question which you can see on the screen right now is about Camp Pride Trophy. So in a summer camp, campers need to compete in three different types of activities to receive a camp pride trophy. Right, so immediately the key details that I mentioned in the tips and tricks is three in this case. So you have identified that you need at least three different types of activities. Notice if you earn more than three, let's say four or five, you would still earn the trophy because you've completed at least three, if that makes sense. So based on the diagram, how many campers will receive the trophy? So we have to look at just three overlaps in this Venn diagram. It's quite complex, but we can easily break it down. So three overlaps. So first of all, the number that goes right in front of me is 17, because 17 is part of uh, hiking, it's part of bird watching, and the idea is also part of horseback riding. So we can immediately put 17. Um, seven is also part of four different categories, um, as I can see here. Is one part of four or three? Uh, one, two, three. Yep, one is also part of three categories. Uh, five looks like it should be, and five is. So, so far we've got 17, 7, 1, and 5. And now, it, I don't know why it won me, but it's really useful to notice on a whiteboard because in my mind I'm having to calculate every single time, whereas I can just jot this down on a whiteboard much easier. So, 17, add 7, 24, uh, add 5, 25, and then add 5, 30. So now let's have a look for any more. Um, three, is that part of any? That's part of the triangle. It's part of the rhombus uh, circle. Yep, that's three already done. I, don't need to, I know it's part of horseback riding as well, but I no need to go more than three, so that's perfectly fine. So add that 33, and then any more. 
Um, hmm. Six. Six is part of the triangle, or part of the square, uh, and circle, so the six. Now, just final check. I don't think 25, 13, 8, 6, 32, 6, 32, 35, 15, 27. Yep, that's it. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to double check. So I know the answer is 39. And so the answer is C. So that's one way of doing it. I've used a, very, a lot of skills right there. Uh, firstly, the idea of using a whiteboard because I ought to jot down all the key details. So 17 at 7, at 1 at 5, at 6 at 3, etc. I've also, for example, uh, talked about using key details because clearly in the title, uh, sorry, in the question it says three different types of activities. So I know I have to look for three different overlaps or three or more overlaps. And I've also read the question properly. How many campers will receive the trophy? So that's really helpful. The idea that using this uh, strategy, it really helps and would help me save a lot of time because what I would do without these strategies, for instance, is what I would have read the question Read, read, sorry, read the title, read the question, and then reread the title, which will waste a lot of time. So I hope that really helped. So if this really helped, please make sure to give a thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing. Uh, my next videos will also be including the UCAT situation judgment and what to do uh, after doing the UCAT. So thank you for watching and stay tuned.